course that is just by the way we are looking at what uh, at least there was a quite an article there that concerns issues to do with education and of course being a teacher yeah. i had to ask him on that remember as we move up, uh, on with our morning discussion on career choice we'd like to hear from you what do you have to say what are some of the things that you need to consider before choosing or picking up a career that best suits you and of course what is your experience in terms of the career that you chose do you feel that you have any kind of regrets so far you can share them via that number below your screen you can also move to our social media platforms as usual it's tawala facebook like the page then drop your comment and we'll be so glad to hear from you molim yes do we have anything like a career that best suits you me something like somebody tells you try and find a career that best suits you that statement is relative if somebody tells you to try and find out a career that best suits you mm -hmm. that's a very perfect statement but if somebody wants to find out a career that suits you it becomes a wrong statement because the career goes hand in hand with your passion right and uh, i cannot definitely understand what your passion is a hundred percent until this what suits you best because mm -hmm. your passion is embedded in your feeling right and uh, in your attitude it is embedded in a lot of ingredients of your personality mm -hmm. that somebody cannot just stand outside and a hundred percent summarize it by giving you this career to fit your hundred mm -hmm. percent so it is also best always to let the children understand themselves first mm -hmm. before you make a verdict or telling them this is the rightful thing for you right of course, Mwalimu, yes. you, you as teacher, and I've, I have even uh, encountered such an experience, Several a teacher times. will tell you, like, I'll be so glad if I find you, you're a doctor somewhere. Yeah. Uh, those are narratives that parents have always told children. Number one thing, if anybody and everybody is passionate about what they are doing, right. you will reach a point of discovering that or realizing that there's nothing called a weaker career mm -hmm. or there's nothing called a bad career. Because as long as you do something to the best of what you can and you produce the best out of yourself in that particular uh, platform or in that particular enclave, mm -hmm. at the end of the day, you will shine with that. But if you are doing it based on the push that somebody is the one who endorsed you to be in that, in that enclave, chances are so high, you will always fail. Right. So to me, I limit myself every time I'm telling children. I always try to make sure... I don't want to make the mistake that was made on me. We had this problem in the family. Right. Uh, our eldest brother, that's the firstborn in our family, mm -hmm. did sciences, is an industrial chemist. Mm -hmm. uh, the guy who follows him uh, took a combination in Form 6, in, mm -hmm. in Form 5 in Uganda called PCB. Mm -hmm. That is physics, uh, biology, I mean physics, chemistry, and biology. Mm -hmm. He was eyeing uh, medicine. Now, it, that trend made my mom and dad to come out with a, uh, a narrative that this family is for scientists, so mm -hmm. everybody has to do sciences. At some point I did that, but if I go back and look at my Form 4 uh, certificate, right. I did my Form 4 in Uganda, mm -hmm. I find that my best subject was history, mm -hmm. followed by political education, mm -hmm. then business studies followed. Mm -hmm. Actually, these sciences came last, but because of the family pressure, I was forced to go and take BAG, that's Biology, Agriculture, and Geography, <laughs> Stroke, right. Chemistry, which was relevant because I did it, and uh, at some point I just felt I'm not fit in this field. Right. And up to now, I do tell myself I did what my mother wanted, but not what I wanted myself. <laughs> yeah. Well, if you've mentioned that there is nothing like a bad career, True. but you'll find people telling you, like, uh, why did you go and study marine engineering? How many, how many, how, uh, marine engineering, how, do you know how many, like, Marine engineers do we have in Kenya? There are only a few. There are chances of you maybe not getting a job, you see? Okay, when I say there is nothing like a bad career, there are several aspects that have to be put in right. to focus. Number one, we have to look at the moral aspect of a career. Is it a morally acceptable career? Because right. somebody outside listening to me right now might mistake that every career is good, meaning even if I go into any moral career, the, t the uh, speaker has said mm -hmm. every career is good. No. The moral aspect, is it acceptable in terms of our social ethics? Right. Number two, your personality, based on your passion and your understanding of yourself, mm -hmm. do you have that zeal of feeling comfortable and enjoying that career? Right. And then we also have got what we call general acceptance of the society. Right. 
in terms of if I say today I want to go and do, uh, for example, what I've said, uh, marine engineering, mm -hmm. I also have to look at where is it going to be applicable. True. I cannot say I want to do marine engineering and I'm in Uganda, a landlocked country, country. which has got no water body. Mm -hmm. And I'm in Burundi, I'm in Rwanda. Mm -hmm. And I don't have chances of flying to Mombasa right. or flying to Dar es Salaam, mm -hmm. where there are ports, or flying to any nation that has got a marine uh, water body. Mm -hmm. I mean, I mean uh, use that knowledge. Right. So those are also factors to consider. But if you have got accessibility to an environment that supports that particular career mm -hmm. and you have got passion and zeal for that career and it is a career that is morally acceptable mm -hmm. based on the government ethics and general social ethics that the society believes in then do your best it will obviously pay you right it will be something so good for you because there's nothing uh, good like doing what you enjoy mm -hmm. other than doing what somebody wants to enjoy right. because uh, i am not what you see and you tell me to be. I am what I 100% believe I have to be right. without somebody forcing me. Because mm -hmm. if you force me, I'll be acting like mm -hmm. Yeah. Very true. We have uh, relatives, we have parents, we have um, our mentors. Somebody will tell you, you know what, Malimu, it's good that you can take this route. You can either look for whether you to be a lawyer, whether to be a teacher. And inside me, maybe I don't feel like I can be a teacher as such. Those parents, those teachers, those relatives and mentors as well and mentors mm. peg their statement on one thing a statement called or a statement expressed like uh, experience is the best teacher right but myself i do rule out i say experience is not the best teacher experience is a good former student mm -hmm. because experience only takes you as far as the person who experienced the matter reached. Right. It means you can never go beyond where the teacher stopped. Mm -hmm. If you are to follow experience, if you are to be my teacher, right. and then you are basing your lesson to me based on your experience strictly. Mm -hmm. That simply means I will only have to follow you to the latter and where you don't understand, I will also stop understanding. Mm -hmm. You get the point? Right. And in that regard, I always tell my students, much as I have got a syllabus drafted for me to use for teaching you, mm -hmm. much as I have got a framework of how I, have to, how I should teach, what is guiding me, mm -hmm. I have to give you a window of self-determination of how you want to use the information I'm giving you. Mm -hmm. Because if I limit that opportunity, chances are so high, where I fail is where you'll fail. Right. You have to exercise your own creativity of using my knowledge mm -hmm. and coming out of my limitations. Because there are high chances that I was also one time limited in one way or the other. Right. Because many teachers who try to base their teachings, a lot of restrictions, have always made children fail, even parents. Mm -hmm. If you, uh, I can never uh, tell my students to 100% follow what I say based on matters of career. Mm -hmm. I will tell them, let me have the opportunity of exciting your ambition. Because if I excite your ambition, your ambition can grow more than mine. Right. Because what drove me to succeed or achieve what I achieved mm -hmm. was basically the ambition, not anything. So if your ambition will be dictated upon by my own ambition, that means you are acting. You are mm -hmm. not living your life. Right. Yes. Definitely. Right. Um, Malimu, there is this thing that uh, most uh, people say, or rather if you speak to uh, the students who have completed Form 4 and yeah, they're looking yeah. forward to choosing their careers. Yeah, yeah. It is a very rough and tough time for them, mm -hmm. specifically um, if I'm to choose a career that I'm supposed to undertake for the next, or uh, let's say uh, something that I'll do as part of my life. In such a time that I'm supposed to choose a career, yes. what do you think I should put into consideration? I've already mentioned the first thing. Uh, let me begin by saying what, a, what is a career? Mm -hmm. uh, this is uh, a general occupation that you're going to undertake over a period of time right. with the aim of getting progress in life True. because it has to project you from one position to, to another. another. Mm -hmm. Now, if that is what a career is, you can never commit your life to something that is not going to be pleasant, which right. means that you're going to jail yourself. Mm -hmm. So number one, you have to look at what is your inbuilt passion. Okay. And that's why it is important for parents to let children understand themselves. Mm -hmm. There are very many children who are living a life that is crafted within the restrictions set by parents. Right. You have to give a child a capacity of understanding themselves, their passion, their zeal. Mm -hmm. And this one simply means, I, I, I was a teacher who used to make those mistakes in the past. I was this guy who used to 
be very rigid when I give instructions. Mm -hmm. I can can in case you go against my instruction without listening to you. Mm -hmm. I would strike you with anything without listening to you. But later when I came and realized I'm only being a colonialist, not even a teacher. <laughs> I'm being awkward in everything I'm doing. Because for a child to fail to follow instruction, right. it does not mean that they are disobedient. Mm -hmm. The child maybe has failed to follow instruction because they have discovered a weakness in the instruction. Right. It's not just disobedience that makes us fail to follow instruction. Sometimes there are kids who are creative. Uh, mm. Let me give you this example. When I was handling some primary school some years back, mm -hmm. we had this boy who was told by a teacher, they were given questions. Mm -hmm. And the question stated, how many wheels does a car have? have. That was the question. Now, the optional answers were four wheels, three, five, mm -hmm. and six. Right. Because there are four options. And now the teacher knew four is the rightful what? Answer. The rightful answer. Right. That's what the teacher knew. So the whole class reasoned like the teacher, except this one boy mm -hmm. who ended up taking five. Mm -hmm. And uh, when the teacher came to class, he was wondering what a damn fool is this. <laughs> because a car moves on four wheels, everybody knows that. Right. But when this kid was brought forth, he was given strokes and asked the question. He said, a car must have five wheels. Right. He repeated the same thing that the teacher is calling wrong answer. He was again slapped by the teacher and mm. made to kneel down. Now, in the midst of his tears and all the anger, he looked at the teacher and told the teacher, Sir, without a spare wheel, you cannot drive. The traffic will arrest you. Mm -hmm. Now, this kid has, they have a family car at home. Right. The teacher has got no car. <laughs> so, this kid understands this thing. That's why it is not always valid mm -hmm. for a teacher to raise a stick straight away. Once you can to Baba Mesa which is not in line with what you say. And you do the thing twice. Most of what we call wrong answers, uh -huh. they are only wrong because we don't reason in the line of the person who has given us those answers. But right. if you also dissect them properly, you can mm -hmm. find from their own framework of thinking, there can be wisdom and sense in it. Very true. Yeah. So the key thing most and paramount is uh, your passion. Passion of the child, mm. let the child understand themselves. Mm. And in that, the kid will make decisions. Some of them have always made what parents thought was the worst decision. Mm -hmm. But later on, when the decision begins paying, mm -hmm. it's when you come to realize, wow, we are currently talking, there's a, a viral uh, story going on of a young man who was uh, acting as a, uh, as a military officer right. in Churchill Show, mm -hmm. the famous Churchill Show here in Kenya. Mm -hmm. And I'm sure he was a sense of mockery sometimes True. because acting, saluting, putting on uh, military, uh, military. military regalia mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. doing all that, just for the sake of comedy, and then you want to say that's your dream for being a military officer, it's not making sense. Mm -hmm. But today as we talk, he has just uh, passed out and mm -hmm. finished his training uh, in the U.S. Army. True. Now, there are things that parents cannot dictate on children. The only thing we have to dictate is morality mm -hmm. and ethics of a society. But if it comes to creativity, we don't need to dictate anything. Right. Because creativity is determined by imagination. And you can never limit imagination. The, world, the largest world is the image world, mm -hmm. where a kid creates an image and can extend it to any dimension they want. Right. Yes. Of course. Um, the difficult point that most uh, students will find it hard when in, term, in terms of choosing a career yes. is uh, how to identify a marketable career. And of course, that is a factor that most people also put into consideration as such. Do you uh, feel like it needs, there is need to consider that as much? Uh, let me tell you this. There's nothing called marketable career. A kid should what be taught, do you mean, Molim? A kid should be taught how to market themselves. Market your talent, market your knowledge, market your confidence, market your physic. Your physical appearance should be able to market it. Mm -hmm. If a kid is taught all those, no matter what career they, fall, they find themselves in, they will always shoot the skies. Right. Who knew that comedy would pay in Kenya before Churchill and the Ridiculous came on stage? Right. Actually, if you came up with such a thing in the early 80s, in the mid 80s and the early 90s, you were like a crazy person. Right. But these guys just came up with it and they worked hard to market it. Mm -hmm. Today, almost every youth is trying to run into comedy. Right. Who knew that uh, short videos on what we call uh, uh, what... Uh, Today, we, the, the short videos running on uh, YouTube TikTok and, and, or TikTok and, and the rest, mm -hmm. who knew that they would pay? Mm -hmm. Nobody knew. But somebody came up with that. That's what I'm saying. 
if you are a parent and you want to hinder or you want to restrict something which you think is bad, right. only do that in regard to moral and ethical aspect of life. Mm -hmm. But not creativity. Mm -hmm. Don't hinder creativity of children because kids can be very creative and do things that most of the time we think are wrong. And later on, just discover the result becomes so great. So I don't really advocate for that. And that's why I'm also saying this. This aspect of telling people that unless you become a doctor, there are uh, comedians who are earning better than some doctors. I know some doctors who are even today in debt. Mm -hmm. <laughs> there, are kids, there, are, there are comedians who are earning better than them. Right. I know people who did uh, engineering and it's taking them nowhere. Mm -hmm. And yet they are told engineering is the best. Mm -hmm. If you go into a place, and let me say this. Uh, let, let me just expound this. Give me this uh, short time to expound this. Right. Apart from the paper you come out of the college with mm -hmm. as your certificate, there are very many aspects of what is in you that determine the success of that paper. Okay. Number one is just what I've said, morality. Mm -hmm. Because your morality is what will make the society prove mm -hmm. that you are valid True. for acceptability right. in the society. Mm -hmm. The number two is your sacrificial nature. Because in order for this certificate to be kick-started, mm -hmm. to start generating income, there must be a portion of you that must put itself into a state of suffering, right. into a state of denial. Mm -hmm. So if you don't have that sacrificial aspect, you karaoke kazini, degree, so you just want to live a life. You know, uh, it is the reason why I was reading an article when I was coming here mm -hmm. in a Ugandan paper, which was written, why school dropouts succeed at a higher rate in life compared mm -hmm. to those who have finished colleges. Mm -hmm. The chances, uh, the reasons are so clear. School dropouts have got no option in life. So they lay their hands on anything, anything. with right. every zeal and passion. Mm -hmm. These guys who went to colleges like us have got where you want to fix yourself and force yourself. Okay. You would only believe that money can only come from teaching. Without a school being open, then there's no way you can get money. So you mm -hmm. lock yourself. Yet people have got ways to make money even if it's some... Uh, uh, I saw my, uh, there's a cousin of mine who is a teacher in a mm -hmm. government school, mm -hmm. but uh, under BOG, BOM, I mean. Right. The moment schools were closed, the BOM teacher not being paid, he came down here and got two mikokoteni. Mm -hmm. He was ordering tomatoes from Voi. Actually, he came and told me that school was paying me 15000 as a BOM. Mm -hmm. My two mikokotenis of tomato, each is bringing me 700 to, eight, to, to 1,000 shillings daily, daily, which means he's earning between... 1,500 mm -hmm. or 1,500 to 2,000 shillings. Mm -hmm. He was telling me chances are so high, we will not go back mm -hmm. to teach. Right. Now you look at such scenario. That's why it is important for a child to understand their personality right. and have no limitation of creativity mm -hmm. and also understand that there is no career which is bad. Definitely. Yes. Oh, that's what Malimu. When we come back, we're going to take a short break here. But of course, Malimu, We've had uh, this issue that the government uh, tries to select a course for you. For example, those who people, uh, those students who succeed well and pass in doing the exams. And of course, they come up and they were told you'll go to Masinde Moliro, you'll be studying, let's say, agricultural economics. And I'm, I'm not passionate about issues to do with economics. Don't you think that the government also is failing to some extent when we are... Um, uh, um, let me apologize before I make this statement. Uh, I'm sorry to say it for my viewers and those who are viewing, but I always say this. Mm -hmm. One of the biggest blunders you can make for yourself is by obeying everything the government says. All right. Yeah. Don't obey everything. The government has got its own concept of you, but do you also have your own concept of yourself? That's the question. Yeah. Most of my students who have always gone and told me later that, sir, I've been given this course and literally speaking, uh, I don't have passion for this. Mm -hmm. There are crafty ways I've always told them to go and use to change the courses. Some universities, it is possible. You change. Right, true, true, yeah. Because uh, the government is looking at budgeting also. They're also looking at the number of lecturers. They're also looking at what the future prospect they have mm -hmm. for the nation. But you have the prospect for your life and for your family, which is different from what the government has. So mm -hmm. if you don't budget for yourself, the government can budget for you in an offside direction. Right. Yes. Very true. Right, of course, we'll be coming back and discussing more on career choice. Remember, that is the topic of our discussion this morning on the hashtag morning conversation. We want to take a short break right here. 
Uh, do stay with us. Continue share in, sharing your feedback, sentiments, question to my guest, Mr. Peter Sai. If you agree with uh, whatever he's saying here concerning career choice, then you can share your comments as well. If you have any questions, your experience as far as uh, the career that you chose, if at all it's helping you or if at all you have any kind of regrets so far, also you can share in your experience as well. We want to take a short break. We'll be coming back in a couple of minutes. Right, we are now on the last part of the show. Of course, uh, on the morning conversation, we are still proceeding with our discussion this morning. The topic being career choice. So difficult it may be for you as a student out there done with your exams uh, that I'm talking about, the KCAC, looking forward to choose a career that you are supposed to partake in uh, the next number of years, so to speak, maybe to uh, your lifetime. And how hard can it be? is the question some of these things that you are supposed to put in, into consideration key almost is uh, your passion that's what uh, mr peter Seid is saying here then of course uh, you should learn how to take it by yourself and not look into whatever you've been told by your mentors your teachers or your parents and uh, maybe the government Marim, yes before we took a break we were talking about uh, uh, the government's tendency of uh, giving out careers to students. Do you feel like it's high time that they should change their tact in terms of uh, uh, maybe dispersing these causes to the students? Uh, the government will not change. And if anybody's waiting for the government to change, that is a dead expectation. Mm -hmm. The government is doing that in regard to the budget that they have the projection that they have for, its, for, the, for the population, right? Uh, the workmanship available that they have, that's in terms of lecturers, mm -hmm. the facilities and infrastructure that they have. Mm -hmm. But you individually, I still emphasize this, right. the biggest deposit a parent can make in a child, apart from taking the child to school, right. is letting this child understand him or herself. Uh, somebody today, I know of uh, somebody who went to school who went to college and opted to do German as right. a language. Mm -hmm. Now, yeah. you would wonder, because I'm sure the government could not give this person German to do. Mm -hmm. But today as we talk, this person is earning a living from teaching German. Mm -hmm. Where do you think the government could come in? The government would not have given this person that. True. But now out of personal ambition, you get that? Mm -hmm. And passion. They went for that and got it. So mm -hmm. most of the time, if the government gives you something, you must know the government is thinking. That's why I told you the aspect or the essence of the government about you mm -hmm. should not dictate on your own aspect of yourself. You must also understand yourself and your personality. It is very important for you to know who you are. Don't look at yourself from the lens, lenses of the government. Look right. at yourself from the lenses of your yourself. own self. True. Because there are people whose dream is to work outside Kenya. Mm -hmm. Now, the government is driving your education in regard to who is going to work within Kenya. Mm -hmm. And yet, he, here is a person whose dream is beyond the Kenyan boundary. Mm -hmm. So, you have to think in that direction. Yeah. Very true. Right. And of course, Mwalimu, we have had uh, different um, people coming out as uh, mentors in terms of careers. We've uh, had... Uh, people walking into schools, speaking about issues to do with careers there. We've had uh, career uh, workshops, students being taken to a place and being taught and being sensitized about these issues to do with uh, how to select a good career. Do you feel such um, things are of help in terms of how are the students themselves that can, can pick up their careers from? Yeah, they are of help to some extent. And uh, they may also damage a child, if not well, uh, uh, organized or well mm -hmm. packaged. Mm -hmm. I have told you this. It is essential that every motivational speaker, every career uh, coach right. or a career guidance mm -hmm. person, to ensure that whatsoever information they are going to deposit in a youth or in a child is not teaching them how, but why. True. Because if you only teach them how, 
then they will adhere to your formula. Yet you also have limitations mm -hmm. as a teacher. Mm -hmm. The truth is, we teachers, there, there is where we failed. There is where we would not go beyond. Right. There is a limit you could not strike the sky, uh, the, the, the ceiling and break through. Mm -hmm. So you should not hinder the kids' uh, capacity of success tomorrow by giving them the hows, dictating the methodology of how they have to move forward. Mm -hmm. Tell them why. Tell them the chances, the available opportunities outside. Right. Break down uh, uh, that barrier of fear, that element of low self-esteem. Destroy that uh, lack of awareness about their personality. And let the kid understand that there is no limit, not even the sky can limit them. Mm -hmm. And once you do that to a child, then you have really given birth to a brain that is a global thinker. Right. Yes. Of course, Malimu now speaking, uh, getting you clearly, yeah. is like um, to some extent you're saying that even these people we call our mentors, our role models, we should look at them or rather look up to them with um, some kind of limits to some extent. Let me tell you this. Uh, having role model must also be progressive. You can never remain to be my role model throughout my life. Mm -hmm. If you are going to remain to be my role model throughout my life, one of us is playing a game with the other. True. It is either me, because if I am truly a human being who is growing mentally, right. I have to reach a point of achieving or understanding everything that you know if you are truly downloading everything into me. Mm -hmm. And if that is true, a time has to come when a student should surpass their teacher or they must be at par. And if you are a wise student, when you notice that your teacher has become unequal to you, mm -hmm. then you seek another role model, this one remains a partner in the journey. Mm -hmm. But many people have forgotten this aspect. You find, I was your teacher, you have reached a level of knowledge and understanding that is almost equal to my own, right. and even sometimes better than my own, mm -hmm. but because of what the society put in your mind that a teacher remains to be a teacher forever, mm -hmm. it is the title that remains, not the mind. Mm -hmm. The mind of a teacher can be arrested throughout, mm -hmm. and the student can overtake him any time. So everybody who wants to be a mentor should give the, the child that they're going to mentor an aspect of growth to even grow beyond themselves as a teacher. Mm -hmm. And that is what we call realistic uh, mentorship that right. makes somebody to become what the world cannot arrest. Mm -hmm. Yes. Right. And uh, there is this issue concerning the job market out there, Malimu. And mm -hmm. currently, Kenya suffers a lot in mm -hmm. terms of uh, we've had people who are unemployed. We've also had uh, the talks about uh, people should not now go ahead and go just straight to universities. We can also seek to have uh, to go through TVET and get some bit of uh, uh, technological uh, mafunzo, so to speak. And then, how then do I Let get me to balance my life? Let me interject. Uh, when a research was being done in one of the universities, there's a professor, I think from a senior university, I'm not from, mm -hmm. who was defining the word unemployment. And I like the way you defined it. Right. If you say you are unemployed, you are unemployed in which sector? Okay. You see, not every idler is unemployed. Right. Because there are people who are unemployed because they are unemployable. Oh. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Oh. There are those who are not having work to do because they are not able to be accepted anywhere, anywhere. because of their characters. Mm -hmm. Uh, let me use myself as an example. I have never been employed under the government. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> the first work I did when I came to Mombasa, I think I was working in a small kibanda helping my aunt to prepare food. Mm -hmm. But that did not make me stop there. I walked out of that, I taught in a primary school. And I went and taught in a secondary school. Mm -hmm. But I didn't stop there. I met a friend who steered something inside me for us to go and start our own school. Right. And we went and started a high school that today is running as Elite Imperial Complex mm -hmm. that I own personally. Mm -hmm. So what I'm trying to say is that the word unemployment is sometimes real, but in most aspects not real. Mm -hmm. Because before you call yourself unemployed, when the government wants to look at unemployed people, right. they go back into the statistics of their colleges and institutions they have around. How many doctors have we trained? 
How many haven't we employed? employed. Right. How many engineers have we trained? Mm -hmm. How many haven't we employed? How many nurses have we trained? How many haven't we employed? Mm -hmm. Then when they do all that statistics is when they come to know the number that we have not employed is the one we call unemployed. Right. But here is a radical person who does not want to undertake any training, even the normal uh, artisan training. Mm -hmm. Even the one you tell him, please, nenda na huyu fundi wa mjengo atakufundisha ujenzi. Mm -hmm. Fanya tu kazi ya kibarua miezi mitatu minne mwisho wake utakuwa umejua cha kufanya. Mm -hmm. Alafu kutoke hapo utaanza kujipatia mapato yako. This person is lazy and not able to do anything. Just wants to wake up, dress smart and join the normal gossips of politics and everything. Right. And then they call themselves unemployed. Those are busy bodies mm -hmm. idling in the name of unemployment. Very true. Yes. But of course, Molemu, the fact that we now even though the government tries to put everyone into one single basket of unemployed Let's think, for yes. example, that we have a problem as far as the job market is concerned now. Mm. And we need, and the students that we have currently that are doing their KCC will also need apps at some point to have to select their careers. I, I met a friend, let me tell you this, I met a friend from Gambia mm -hmm. called Lamin Chor. Lamin Chor was operating a waste uh, fuel processing uh, plant right. around poor trees mm -hmm. here in Changamwe. Mm -hmm. So I asked Lamin Cho, what is the air ticket, return ticket from Gambia to Kenya? Mm -hmm. It was something way above 50,000. So I was asking surely, why do you leave Gambia, an African state, coming to Kenya? Do you know what he told me? Mm -hmm. He told me, what's the population of Gambia? I told him, I don't know. He told me it is less than 10 million. Mm -hmm. What's the population of Kenya? By that time, we were 40 something. So I told him, we are 40 something. Then he told me there is a higher market capacity in this country than in my country. Mm -hmm. Chances of getting somebody to sell to is so high. That's why I'm running from where there's low population, where I can't get who to sell to and come here. Mm -hmm. Now with us, we are complaining. Even today, Nigeria has got a hundred million plus citizens in terms mm -hmm. of their population. Mm -hmm. But there are those who are running from these nations into Nigeria and they're mm -hmm. getting jobs. That's why I emphasize on matters creativity. Right. I emphasize on matters passion. Mm -hmm. I emphasize on matter opening the brain, being available to be taught, being available to accept, to fit yourself in situations that need dynamic changes any now and then. Mm -hmm. Yes. Right. So you feel to some extent that there should not be a balance between how I select my career and looking at the job market. The word job market to me, I really want to let everybody understand this. The market is you selling yourself. Mm -hmm. Not what the media publishes outside there as the market. Mm -hmm. I know very many, actually, the, the, the other time, I, somebody came to my office. I will withhold the names to say mm -hmm. this. Came to my office looking for a job. But, you know, the papers that they gave me were even a threat to me. Mm -hmm. This is an engineer uh, from Kenyatta University. And I looked at his uh, degree paper, even myself, there's some things like that I never under underwent. <laughs> so I asked myself, and where I met him, right. I met him when he was selling water, uh -huh. at a water selling point, uh, Kibanda Yamaj. Uh -huh. So later when he came to my office telling me, come by, Piana is a teacher, I was like, are you sure? Yeah, you sure Bring yeah. your papers. When he yeah. brought them, I saw them. Now, I could not do anything. I incorporated him. Mm -hmm. But there are very many things we found out that was contributing. Number one, he's a very lazy guy. Mm -hmm. Number two, he has put alcoholism mm -hmm. into his life. Number three, he's a person who always wants to find somebody to blame for every failure. Even what is the one who has made is a mistake. <laughs> so those are aspects that you have to look at before you complain of what the job market is. Mm -hmm. Who are you? What is your personality? Right. Yes. Very true. Now, so far so good. I have chosen a career here. Yes. Few years later... I begin regretting. Would you say like I'm the one who made a very big mistake in selecting that career or my regrets come simply because it starts with me instead? We only regret when we cannot think ahead. But if you can think ahead, number one, let's put this dogma to death. Mm -hmm. let, let, not just to rest, but to death. The dogma of assuming that if you are a PP1 teacher, then the only place you can earn money is from classrooms. 
The dogma of assuming that if you are a journalist, then the only place you can earn money is when you're holding a microphone mm -hmm. and reporting for a TV station. Mm -hmm. Those are things that people get from schools. I, I learned irrelevant things from what I'm doing right now. Actually, now, by the way, I'm running a school as a business, mm. but I feel jobless. Right. Yeah, because I've delegated almost everything. There's a principal at school, there's everybody handling it, there's a, there's a, there's a bazaar and everything. So I feel like I'm literally jobless. I, I did another thing. I'm not even in the line of what I'm doing as a business. Mm -hmm. So you must be that person that any time you find that nature is trying to create a roadblock ahead of you, divert or strike it. Mm -hmm. Always learn to make a way for yourself like water. Right. Yes. Definitely. Always learn to make a way through like water. That's what my guest is saying as we wrap up Molimu, yes there is somebody watching you yeah maybe he chose a career and he feels that to some extent i i don't why are we not turned back but i made a mistake what would you like to advise them yes, i reiterate the statement i said and let me close by saying this a boy who is just a form for liver walked into my place of work told me he's idle at home he knew we could not employ him because of Form 4 Liver. We are employing TSC uh, teachers. teachers. So he told me he's idle at home. He wants to keep busy by always teaching from ones and twos. I told him we don't have a place. You are going to give us problems in the ministry. He said, no, sir. I'll just be in the staff room. I go and teach under the guidance of another teacher. We told him, yes, no problem. If that's the status of how we are going to work. When we gave him the opportunity and he was volunteering, mm -hmm. we were not paying him. Mm -hmm. Within the first two weeks, the most popular name in the compound was this boy's name. Mm -hmm. He was the first to arrive, the last to leave, the most concerned about kids who are speaking in relevant languages, those who have not tucked in, those who have not done the assignment. To the point, by the time he was finishing the first, second year, we had to appoint him the deputy principal without papers. Mm -hmm. You can sell yourself. Right. This boy came, and everybody here is looking at their papers. I'm a TSC teacher. I'm this and this. You always can dictate here. It's true. Nobody will dictate, but you will not grow. Learn to be that person who, when you are given opportunity, do it as if there's going to be no opportunity again in life. Very true. That's what sells people. So mm -hmm. if you say your career is not marketable, what have you done to the last or to the least of your limits? Mm -hmm. Because you cannot just say, after writing applications, then this career is not working. There are other things you can do. Myself, I wrote applications. By the way, I even got a job when I had no ID. Mm -hmm. And I worked. So there are situations you should learn to maneuver. Right. That's why I'm saying, let's emphasize on opening the brain. All these motivational speeches and career guidance that don't aim at opening the brain of a person is just killing the person. Right. Building confidence but not putting a nozzle to release the confidence. Mm -hmm. Yes. Very true. And of course, I believe from whatever part you are watching us from, you've a gap a bit over ideas as far as a career choice is concerned. It's not about job market. It's not about uh, having a godfather. It's not about whom do you look up to as a mentor or a role model. It's Very up true. to you yourself. Very true. It's up to you yourself. Make sure that you start by understanding what you want, what you can do, and start exercising what you can do. Um, of course, and it will be sellable. Uh, to some bit of extent and i believe you've taken up some notes that will be of help in future thank you so much for your time thank you also to everyone who made this program a success coming to you on your screen let's do this again tomorrow same time same place goodbye have a nice day my name is shadrach Ogeda.